Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. When tourists enter the visitor's centre at Gebekli Tepe, there are two prominent slogans on display. Marketing messages used by the authorities and repeated by the media time and time again. Those being zero point of history in the first temple in the world. The first slogan is referring to the site roughly marking the transition between hunter-gatherer societies and sedentary farmers. And the second comes from the site's interpretation by the late great archaeologist Klaus Schmidt. Last year, Gebekli Tepe got about 850,000 visitors, and I expect numbers to continue rising year by year as the site's prominence and popularity continue to grow. I myself will be going next year, and I'm very close to finalising the dates, so if you're interested in joining me on tour, join the waiting list by clicking the link in the description below or the pinned comment. Slogans are used by authorities, the media, authors, YouTubers and more, because they're the hooks to generate interest. Marketing messages. Gebekli Tepe is called a smoking gun site the trigger for the onset of neolithization. But the problem is that such phrases, which are still being used in 2023, are now becoming out of date. When work began at Gebekli Tepe in 1995, it was thought that logistically demanding construction projects on a large scale, as well as complex religious belief systems, were only possible after the onset of agriculture when an abundance of food meant you could divide labour and build a complex society. Gebekli Tepe changed that view. The site is older than the first fully domesticated crops in the region. The T-shaped pillars each weigh several tonnes, and they are intricately carved with animal motifs. In October 2023, archaeologists also found a life-size boar statue and it even had the remnants of paint, and this added a whole new dimension to the Gebekli Tepe iconography, and also the skills of the ancient people. Although Klaus Schmidt only led excavations for around 5% of the site, he offered his own interpretation, and of course being an authority, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. He suspected that nomadic tribes from surrounding camps would gather at Gebekli Tepe for ritual festivals and feasts, and it was these gatherings that led to the development of sedentism and agriculture. One of Schmidt's soundbites was first came the temple, then the city. Klaus Schmidt sadly passed away in 2014, and Dr. Lee Clare is now in charge. He's been the research coordinator at Gebekli Tepe since 2015. And because archaeology is an evolving field of study, and because excavations and analysis have continued since the passing of Klaus Schmidt, Claire now sees the site very differently to his predecessor. New research and insights have raised doubts about Schmidt's interpretation that Gebekli Tepe was purely a cult site, a temple for the surrounding tribes. But why? There is a fantastic article on the German website faz.net, linked below in the description, and it explains the evolving view of Gebekli Tepe extremely well. As it says, and as I've presented on this channel many times, some of the rectangular buildings that Schmidt interpreted as court buildings were in fact residential. They were homes. Yes, we now know that people were living at the site. Hundreds of stone vessels and tools show that Gebekli Tepe, much like its sister site Karahan Tepe, was a settlement, and it was ever since its very earliest days. When authorities were adding a roof to the excavation site, the deep drilling brought up evidence of residential buildings just as old as the monumental oval enclosures with T-shaped pillars. So we now know that Gebekli Tepe was never purely a cult site, that it was always a settlement, ever since the very first phase of activity. Another reason that Klaus Schmidt called Gebekli Tepe a ritual site 
was because he believed the oval enclosures were filled in in some kind of ceremony, decommissioned and buried in a ritual. Animal bones were found between the pillars, and these were thought to be from ritual feasts. Before a new place of worship, a new oval enclosure was built right next to the previous one. But as it says on Fast.net, and as I've stated a number of times on this channel, Dr. Clare and his team have reanalyzed the fill of the enclosures, and they now believe the burial of the buildings was likely caused by nature. The structures were damaged from landslides and slope slides, which eventually buried them, and humans could have finished the job that nature started. The oval enclosures were also not used one after the other, they were used somewhat in parallel. Yes, some are older and some are younger, and some had collapsed due to landslides when the site was still active and some had not, but there is now little evidence to back up Schmidt's former claims. And that's the point of this video. In the year 2023, Gebekli Tepe is probably only around 10 to 15% excavated, and our understanding evolves as excavations and analysis continue, or at the very least, that is what should happen. There is now a new generation of researchers at the site gaining new insights and putting forward new hypotheses, and using the latest available data, which is exactly what should happen with archaeology. But these ideas are not permeating the media. Out-of-date slogans are still being used in the world's press, on podcasts and on YouTube videos, and even at the visitor's centre of Gebekli Tepe. They continue to promote old ideas that are out of date but we can understand why. The reason we have a visitor's centre, nice walkways and a large roof over the site is of course tourism. Dozens of new hotels have also opened in Shan Lertha, and this is because the pre-pottery, Neolithic history and heritage of southeastern Anatolia is driving people to this part of the world. The world's first temple, the Zero Point of History and the Smoking Gun site are all slogans that have sold Gebekli Tepe very well, especially to a more passive audience. And yes, authorities do need to find ways to sell what truly is one of the most important sites in the world. The mystery of Gebekli Tepe is what drives people towards it, and although archaeologists do their job, and try and solve the mysteries with discoveries, analysis, evidence and interpretation. For those in charge of tourism, is this really what they want? I don't know. And this leads me to another reason why out of date, more exciting and sensational slogans are still being used today. There is a severe lack of new information coming out of all 12 Tastapella sites in southeastern Anatolia. We don't see new excavation reports and official papers. Over the past couple of years, all we've had are a couple of news stories, even though the excavations have been extensive. Last year, the Archaeology Harbour YouTube channel interviewed site managers for each of the Tastapella sites, and this was the only source of new information for an international audience. I worked to translate the video from Turkish to English, which was incredibly difficult, and this was to try and give people an update, to tell people what's going on, what's been discovered, and also what experts are currently thinking about these incredible ancient sites, because there is a very hungry audience just waiting to learn. In the video, I found brand new information I'd never heard before. And as grateful as I was for that video, I also found it very frustrating that nothing else has been published. The information is so difficult to come by. Talking to the media in October 2023, Head of Excavations at Gebekli Tepe in Karahan Tepe, Dr Nesmi Carroll, said discoveries never end. But as far as I can see, the public rarely hear anything about them. We did have an announcement about a new human statue at Karahan Tepe and the painted boar at Gebekli Tepe, but really, how much have we learned in the past few years? 
Of course, I do know it takes time and effort to put together an archaeological paper. I do respect the work that's done by archaeologists, but I do wonder if the tourism element holds back the archaeological updates. Would a more mundane explanation for the Tastapella sites turn off the more passive history fans? Does repeating world's first temple and zero point of history actually lead to more visitors? Again, I don't know, but having an understanding about how the world really works, surely politics and economics are involved. Of course, I'm only speculating, but it all does seem quite strange. But another reason why old ideas continue to linger in 2023 is due to the universal respect for Klaus Schmidt. There is unanimous praise for his life's work, and I've never read a bad word about him, and by all accounts quite rightly so. Klaus Schmidt was a pioneer. He was the man that led the first excavations, and he knew Gebekli Tepe better than anyone. You could also argue that he is responsible for bringing hundreds of thousands of tourists into the country, and he is still considered a giant of prehistoric research in Turkey. The new findings, the new analysis and new interpretations that contradict Schmidt's view are therefore not easily accepted by everyone. Schmidt painted a magnificent picture of Gebekli Tepe and it sparked our imaginations. Hunter-gatherers coming together from miles around to build a cathedral on a hill. But the reality is now looking quite different. But that's the nature of archaeology. Our understanding evolves, and old ideas are replaced with new ones that better suit the findings. As stated on Faz.net, what Klaus Schmidt saw as an altar, Lee Clare might see as a stone bench. And when talking to the media, Claire is careful to use neutral terms to describe things, and in my opinion, quite rightly so. The oval enclosures are not called court buildings anymore but they're referred to as special purpose buildings. They were at the heart of the site, they were different to the residential structures, which indicates they did have a special purpose, but we really don't know if this purpose had anything to do with belief or religion. We don't know if the anthropomorphic pillars and stone heads are depictions of gods, ancestors or are just showing the human anatomy. We have no idea why things look the way they do. Some say the animal reliefs are constellations, others say they're maps of the region, some say they're depicting the seasons, or that they tell stories, myths and legends, whilst others say they're merely decoration for boring old slabs of limestone. In truth, we don't know if there really is anything resembling a temple at Gebekli Tepe. And calling it the zero point of history is also inaccurate, because we do find similar constructions with similar iconography at other sites in the Fertile Crescent. And some of these sites, like Kortik Tepe, Tel Caramel and Chakmak Tepe, are in fact older. Gebekli Tepe is of course enormous, and it was clearly a very important settlement but its architecture is not unique and it's not the oldest site in the region. So calling it the world's first temple and zero point of history is now out of date with the current state of knowledge. What it is, is part of a network of settlements of the pre-pottery Neolithic. The people that lived there were sedentary hunters and gatherers. Some people stayed at home whilst others were mobile. Such a lifestyle likely led to a population boom, and this would have put stresses on resources, and this could have led to the creation of a hierarchy in society. Society needed organisation and order, but a new system and way of life can lead to conflicts, and so whilst people built their own domestic structures to live in, maybe the overall special purpose buildings actually solved the struggles in society promoting a common identity of these people through shared stories. That was an idea by Dr. Clare as stated in the Faz.net article, but as he admits, it is important to keep the interpretation open, to leave room for new insights, 
because work at Gebekli Tepe is not over, not by a long shot. When Gebekli Tepe was first discovered, there were great reservations about the discovery of a large pagan temple in what is the very conservative Shanlefa province. The city sees itself as the birthplace of Abraham, and so having the world's first temple, a pagan temple in the vicinity, was not easy for everyone to accept. But tourism boomed, and now as the years have passed, the local population has grown to accept and now embrace the prehistoric past of their land. Gebekli Tepe is bringing people into Turkey and from here other sites of interest are also gaining prominence. For example, Hittite ruins and beautiful mosques are also getting new visitors. Tourists are also taking an interest in local culture and cuisine. So, it is hard to change perceptions of Gebekli Tepe so soon after they've just been accepted. But I do agree with Dr. Claire that we do need to keep interpretation open leave room for new insights and accept the fact that our understanding of archaeological sites evolves and that's because excavations and analysis continue. Whatever we think of Gebekli Tepe, whatever we believe and what we accept, I think we can all agree that it is one of the most incredible historical sites ever discovered and I for one can't wait to visit in 2024. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.